Hi guys, welcome back to Need Spire. I hope all of you must be doing well and preparing for your exams with all the vigor because these are the last few days and you all need to give it your best. So if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing because I upload a very high yield content almost every alternative day on my channel so that you all can get benefited from that. And if you already watch my videos, thank you so much. So let's move on to today's topic which is the structure of muscle fiber. Also, some of you had asked me to upload a video on the mechanism of muscle contraction. I will be doing that very soon after this one. So today we are just concerned about the structure of muscle fibers. Okay, so let's get started. Now, before studying about the structure of muscle fibers, we will shortly study about the types of muscle fibers. Okay, because we have three types of muscles in our body. All of you must be knowing this by now. The, the voluntary, that is the skeletal muscles, the involuntary, that is the smooth muscles and the cardiac muscles. So these are the three types of muscles in our body. Okay. I will give you a short overview in comparison basis. Okay. And after that, we'll study about the skeletal muscle in, in detail. Okay. So let's get started. Now, the first thing that you need to know about these muscles is that where are they present? Okay, see, voluntary or skeletal muscles, that means we can control them. So they will be present in our limbs. That is the upper limb, the arm and the lower limb, that is the leg. So arms and legs, upper limb and the lower limb. Okay, now what about smooth muscles, which we cannot control? These are involuntary. So they will be present in the visceral organs. For example, the urinary bladder, the dermis of skin, the erector pili muscles of the dermis. These are just examples, okay? And cardiac muscles, as the name suggests, are present in the heart, okay? So this is about the location. Now, a bit about the structure. See, these muscles, that is the skeletal muscles, are cylindrical in shape. The smooth muscles are spindle-shaped like this. And the cardiac muscles, again, are cylindrical in shape, okay? So no confusion here. These two are cylindrical. This one and this one are cylindrical and the smooth muscle is spindle shaped. Now, again, in the structure only, I I'll talk about the branching. See, these fibers are unbranched. They have no branches, right? These also are unbranched, but the only branched fibers are the cardiac muscles. So they are branched. They have little branches, right? No confusion. Now comes about the nucleus. So the skeletal muscles are multinucleated. That means they have many nuclei. Okay, whereas the smooth muscle is uninucleated, only one nucleus is present and the cardiac muscle is also uninucleated. Okay, so multinucleated is also only the skeletal muscle. Now, there are some light and dark bands present, which we'll talk about in detail in the coming few minutes. So just listen to this right now and I'll explain it later. So there are some alternate dark bands and light bands, dark bands and light bands like this on the surface of only striated muscles not these smooth muscles not these cardiac muscles they don't have any light and dark bands present now why are these light and dark bands present they are present due to two proteins that is actin and myosin now very common confusion that can arise is is actin and myosin not present in the smooth muscles and the cardiac muscles yes it is but the catch here is that the actin and myosin are arranged in a particular fashion so as to give this appearance in the skeletal muscles whereas they are not arranged in such a manner in cardiac and smooth muscles so there is no light and dark bands present okay very good now the control you know it skeletal muscles are controlled by the central nervous system whereas the smooth muscles by the autonomic nervous system and the cardiac muscles by both central and the autonomic nervous system okay now, a very important point is about the fatigue, that is the tiredness of these muscles. Do these muscles get fatigued? It is very basic and very common sense. You know that your muscles of your arms and legs, they do get fatigued, okay? So, soon acquire fatigue, okay? Now, can your visceral muscles get fatigued? Do the muscles of your internal organs ever get fatigued? No, they do not get fatigued, okay? And the cardiac muscles, these two never get fatigued, okay? Because if the cardiac muscles get fatigued, the life of the person is over, okay? So this is just a basic comparison between the three types of muscles. What we have to study about in detail are the voluntary or the skeletal muscles, okay? So let's study about the skeletal muscle structure.
I am starting from the basic. Okay, I am starting from zero. All of you know that a muscle is attached to the bone. Okay, so see this here is the bone, right? And this is a muscle which is attached to it. This is a gross appearance of a muscle. We are not using any microscope here. Okay, and the covering of this muscle that is present on this muscle is the epimysium. This one. Okay, so the first covering we talked about is the epimysium. Right? No confusions. Now the second layer is the perimysium. What is this perimysium covering? Now you know this is one muscle, but this muscle is made up of many muscle fascicles or bundles. Okay, these are some bundles, and many bundles make the muscle. Okay, now what are these bundles covered by? These muscle fascicles or bundles are covered by this layer here, which is the perimysium. Okay. This is the second layer, and now comes the final, that is the third layer, that is which covers these little muscle fibers. I told you this muscle is composed of various fascicles or bundles. What are these bundles made up of? These bundles are made up of individual muscle fibers, and those muscle fibers are covered by this layer here, which is the endomycin. Okay, so no confusions with the layers. The first one, I'm writing it down, is the epimysium. The second one is the perimysium, and the third one is the endomysium. Right? Now this was about the layers. Okay. Now see, if we zoom out, this muscle it is made up of these fascicles. He has taken out one fascicle, which is made up of various muscle fibers, and then he has taken out one muscle fiber, and this is what we have to read about in detail: the structure of a muscle fiber. Okay. The microscopic structure of a muscle fiber we are going to read now. Assuming this is a muscle fiber, okay. Now there are some terms that have been changed. If you are well versed with the chapter of cell, you know there is a cytoplasm, there is a plasma membrane. There are different structures. Okay, those different structures have been just renamed in the muscle fiber. There is nothing much different. Okay, there are just the names are different. So first, the outer membrane of the muscle fiber is called the sarcolemma. Okay. Now each muscle fiber contains multinucleated cytoplasm. I told you this is multinucleated, and this cytoplasm is known as the sarcoplasm. Okay. Now what is present in these muscle fibers are the actin and the myosin. These are the proteins. Okay. These are called myofilaments. These proteins are known as myofilaments, and it is this actin and this myosin which interact in a certain way to bring about the muscle contraction. Okay, now we will study about the structure of the actin and the myosin, and after that will come the theory of muscle contraction. Okay, let's study about the structure of actin and myosin in detail. Now, see the first protein is this actin. This is also called the thin filament, whereas myosin is known as thick filament. Okay, now see actin. It is very simple. Actin is made up of two filamentous actins. Okay, the actin protein is made up of two filamentous actins. These are called filamentous actins, like this. Okay, which are helically bound over each other. Just like you study the structure of DNA, which is helically bound. Similarly, these filamentous actins are bound upon each other in a helical fashion. Okay. Now, what is this troponin and tropomyosin? Look. First of all, I'll tell you the tropomyosin. Is just a curtain on troponin. Okay, just remember it like this. It is a curtain on troponin. Now, why is a curtain required on troponin? Because troponin is the active site of the actin. Okay, the actin cannot be active all of the time, right? So, to cover those active sites, we have a protein known as tropomyosin. Now, what are the active sites on the troponin? It is made up of three subunits. That is trop I, trop T, and trop C. Okay, the muscle contraction starts when calcium binds to trop C, and the trop I and trop T get uncovered, and these are the active sites, and then the myosin binds to them, and the theory of muscle contraction starts. Now let's talk about myosin. So myosin is a polymer. Okay, that is, it is formed of different different units, and those different units are called monomers. And the one monomer of myosin is called meromyosin. This is the structure of one meromyosin that we are going to study. Now see. It has a globular head, a short arm, and a tail. Okay, this is the structure: a globular head with a short arm and a tail. Now, the globular head with the short arm is called the heavy meromyosin (HMM). Okay, this part is the HMM. Okay, and this tail is the 
LMM that is light miromycin. Now what is important is that now on this head there are two sites. One is the actin binding site and another is the myosin ATPase, right? So on the actin binding site as you can infer what binds is this actin comes and binds and and what does this myosin ATPase do? It facilitates ATP breakdown which provides energy for the muscle contraction, okay? So this is the structure. Now what is a sarcomere? Every year, invariably, there is a question from this topic that is a sarcomere, so it is very important. A sarcomere is a structural and a functional unit of skeletal muscle, okay? Now, I'll break it down in a very simple manner to you. Just look here with concentration. Now, see, I told you that there is a light and a dark band on the muscle fiber, okay? The light one is the actin and the dark one is the myosin. Now, here, this brown color represents the myosin and the blue color represents the actin, okay? Now, how it is placed is that there are these thick myosins and then there are these thin actins, okay? And there is a space between two actin filaments. They don't touch each other, okay? So now, the actin-containing part will be the lighter part because they are thin naturally and the myosin-containing part will be the darker part, okay? So the light bands are called as the eye bands or the isotropic bands. You can see here. Here only actin is present, actin, 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 and this is a light one, so it is called the I band, okay? And this dark band is called the A band or the anisotropic band, this one. This is the A band, right? Now in the center of the I band and the Z band, there are some lines. And how do you remember the names? You can remember them by the mnemonic is and am, okay? Is, that is IZ, not IS, and am is AM. So in the I band, there is this line which is called the z line whereas in the a band there is this line called the m line okay these are the centers right now look here i'm telling you again here the myosin are present it is the a band or the anisotropic band here the actin are present and this is the light band or the i band in the middle of the i band is the z line and in the middle of the a band is the m line and this space where there are no actin only myosin are present is called the h zone okay this is called the H zone. This is the structure of a sarcomere. Now, a sarcomere starts from where to where? All of it is not a sarcomere. A sarcomere starts from this to this. So, this is a very important question. Has been asked many times in the exams. That a sarcomere contains one A band and two half of I bands. How? Look here. Very simple. One A band half of I band, not a full I band, okay, this half, and this half of again I band, this whole of this is the sarcomere, okay, this is a very important question, now next question, what is the length of sarcomere, this you have to mug up, that the length of sarcomere is 2.5 microns, now another question, very important, one myosin filament is surrounded by how many actins, and one actin filament is surrounded by how many myo myosin filaments, okay, see, one myosin here surrounded by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. 6 actins, right? Where is one actin? So one actin is surrounded by how many myosins? Look here, this is the actin. This is surrounded by 1, 2 and 3. 3 myosins only, right? So it is surrounded by 3 myosins. These are very important questions. One-liners have been asked multiple times, okay? So this was about the structure of muscle fibers. I hope I have made my points very, very clear. Our next video will be on the mechanism of muscle contraction, which is again very important. And I will make it very simple for you again. So till then, keep studying. I'll see you in the next video. And do not forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. It helps me be consistent with the work. So see you in the next video. Goodbye.